Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. We had a bit of an issue on the renovation this week. Basically, the floor layers have been in a latex at all, but this wet patch kept appearing in the same spot. Obviously, there's a leak on the system somewhere. I wasn't too sure what was leaking on at the time, so it was a case of exposing it, finding it, fixing it, so they could crack on, really. I was just trying to figure out which way the pipes were running. There was kind of a mark on the floor to indicate they were running to the left. Obviously, when you're chopping, you don't really want to hit your pipes and do more damage. I chopped a little bit of a hole in the floor and landed on top of a 15mm elbow. That particular elbow actually felt dry for a start. We've got them chopped up. They don't appear to be leaking. But what I might do is fire the heating back up and see if we get a pressure drop. I mean, it's held on the pressure. It's just wet through around here. I'm not too sure what's going on, really. What I've done is I've pumped the pressure up as high as I dare. I'm going to fire the heating back up. But it's definitely wet but the pressure is still over at one bar. But I'll put it up to like two and a half now and we'll fire it up and see what happens. Then I hope it's not on the other side because it's all the kitchen under there so I can't get to it. But I'm not too sure, it's, it keeps coming back wet. Right, I've just fired the heating up and I think it's leaking on that elbow there when it gets hot. You can see it's coming wet now. So I'm gonna to have to drain it back down Luckily I haven't put any inhibitor in yet, but you can see it's bubbling up a lot. Which is an absolute freaking pain, to be honest with you. But good job we spotted it before the floor went down, because that would have caused a pressure drop. I just hope there's no more on the system. Look at that, look. It's just coming out here, look, when the heating gets hot. What a pain. Well, we'll deal with it. That one appears to be bone dry. But that one... Every time I touch it, every time I touch it, it comes back wet. Of course, it's not doing it now. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it is leaking on that one. Look. Not a lot, but it is. Right, I'm certain it's just leaking on the elbow. So what we're going to do, isolate the boiler, we're going to drain it down. Yeah, it just keeps coming back wet on that joint. So it's not a lot, but it's obviously staying in the floor and it's obviously eventually drop pressure. So we're going to cut it, we're going to cut it there, we're going to cut it there and we'll replace this piece here. Right, so it's slowing down now. Um, been running a little bit but we'll just wet back all this up and once it's gone we'll hopefully get enough out the pipe just so we can solder a couple of joints in there hopefully. So here I'm basically just trying to get as much of the water out of the pipe and need it bone dry otherwise you've got no chance of solving it. I always use steel wool on top of my pipe to try and make it as clean as possible. Obviously you need that copper clean otherwise the flux won't take and it won't solder properly. I use emery cloth underneath because it's easy to get on, under the pipe that way if that makes sense. It's always tricky when you're in a floor duct but you know you just got to do your best to try and get your pipe clean. So this is just showing the new section of pipe I've made up to replace the old. I've fluxed it really well, I've probably used a little bit too much flux, but when you're in a floor you just want it to flow properly if that makes sense, it is always awkward. Just give your pipe a really good wipe off at the end. You don't want any flux left on it whatsoever. Just unsweated that pipe, look. It's never even soldered underneath. Top was all right. Just a poor joint. Right, I've just got to get the heating system pressurized all back up, just on our fill loop. I don't know if my mate's got the water off, but Possibly he's got the water off, so we'll get it 
we'll get it filled back up, make sure we've got no leaks, and uh, yeah, just got a little bit of pipe lagging to finish in here as well. But other than that, job's getting there really. Right, the system's all filled back up to one bar. What we're going to do, I've just fired the boiler back in, we'll make sure it's not leaking, then we'll put some um, lagging on the pipe, and then we'll get it get it all the squeezed back in. Hopefully, it should be okay. Whilst I've been fixing that leak, my mate's busy second fixing up here. We'll probably just turn that panel around so the handle's on the right, but other than that, he's made a decent job, I think. Got the new basin, the non-cracked one. He's got all the toilet and everything in, to be fair to him. So, yeah, seems to be getting on all right. I've got a few minutes left in my day, so I'm just going to get this basin screwed back to the wall because the tiler's here, he's going to do all the tiling. It's just a simple job of just screwing them in, the L brackets, and then the basin will just bed on. Just on silicon. I filmed one of these before, so I'm probably not going to show this. But the second fix, all the flooring and everything's down now. So we just get this put in while we've just got a few minutes left. And we will, uh, yeah, just mean. So when we come back, hopefully later in the week, all this will be tiled so we can get our shower valve on, shower screen, and just finish all the little bits off, really. I'm going to put a shore stop in here because the water and everything's been boxed in, which is great because it tidies all this lot up. Obviously, we've got two washing machines going over here. I'll put double check valves and uh, valves and stuff, and I'll put a hockey stick over in that corner somewhere. But you're not going to be able to get to the stop tap very easily. It's down there currently. So what I'm going to do is cut one of these in and just mount the, mount the switch up above. So if you ever need to turn the water off quickly, it's going to be up there because obviously you don't want to be taking screws out. What I'm going to do is mount it somewhere here, so it's just a case of flicking the water on off here. You haven't got to remove any of the tumble dryers or anything that's going down here to get to the water. So it's going to make life so much easier. All you do with these is obviously root your pipes as it shows. You've got some flexible tube, it just goes on to that switch. So they're dead easy to fit really. I'll try and get a few shots, but I am a bit under pressure today because we've got tons to do. But yeah, that's the sort of kit you get with it. Right, I've got my thing screwed on the wall. Obviously, I've, I've leveled it all up. All you've got to do is root your cables or your pipes like that. So they go around the back and then into there, into the back of your, into your back of your switch. So you don't want them kinked or anything like that, but dead easy. And then that just feeds onto the other, the other bit. I just got to cut that into the water supply and that's the job done then. They just push on. So nice and easy. Obviously, you've got an arrow. Just watch with your earth bonding as well because it wants to be on the top side. But apart from that, should be fine. So you just need to turn your water off outside. These ones are just quarter turn, so that's off at the minute. That's on. Probably didn't see that very well, but across the valve is off. That way's on. So got that turned off, so just put the lid down back on it. So nobody falls down the hole. And we'll uh, crack on with the valve inside now. So I've already opened the cold tap. This is pretty much the lowest point on the system. So We'll carefully try not to flood the place. We'll open that up. Just get as much water out as we can before we cut into our pipe, so obviously we don't cause a flood. But yeah, just in case releasing the pressure. These are going to be the washing machine pipes. I've messed up a little bit here, to be honest with you, because I haven't quite brought my pipes through far enough, but I might just have to trim this out a little bit and just extend these. And then I was just going to bring these up, double check valves, into my washing machine valve. That's my way, so I'm going to put a hockey stick up there somewhere just with a double a double thing, but I'll do that in a minute once I've got this short stop done. So what I'll probably do is leave this open and I'm gonna cut into the pipe work and hopefully we shouldn't get too much. I've got a little plumb tub ready as well down there. So we should be good. I don't know if you guys can see very well down here. I'll put my other phone there. I'm pleased to turn it off outside because the connection on the main it's moving up and down. I don't know what that I don't know what that connection is to be honest with you, but what I might do is put it on the 25 and put a new piece up. But I'm not happy with that. I'm pleased to I think I'd have flooded it if I hadn't turned it off outside. It's just rocking all over the place. Well, as I say, I'll cut it, get a liner out of the van, probably put a 25 stop tap to copper and then into my shore stop. It's always tricky. And then the bonding we'll have to move above the shore stop because it'll all be plastic blow in theory. 
So I've got a 25 Filmax dot tap in the van. I've only got a 25 to 22, so I'll have to reduce to 15. 25 insert. That might be right, but loose all over the place. So I soon as just cut it out and do it again. So hopefully I'll get the arrow going the right way. But I'll put my insert in, that go all the way in there, go to 22 copper, then I'll put my short stop. Hopefully we've got room for that. We'll soon find out. So put your insert in your pipe, your fitting goes on, arrow going up, that just pushes on. That pushes all the way in there like that. Then you just tighten that nut up. Obviously I can't really do it one-handed. And then these, these reducing sets just go inside. That'll take me to 22 and then hopefully, where's my short stop is? I've got room to get, obviously I have to take my nut on Olive Bob. Hopefully I've got room to get that on there. We'll soon find out. Right, I've got my stop tap tightened up. I don't think I've got room to get that in. So what I'm going to do is mount it that way. I'll come up 22, reduce it to 15, and then just bend, bend it back. I'll put a drain off tap down here somewhere and just do it that way. It just gives me a little bit more room. It doesn't really matter if it sits there. I prefer to have a, a proper stop tap before the short stop, if that makes sense. I'd sooner not. It's just how I prefer, because these short stops are okay, but it's better if you've got you know, two stop taps, in my opinion. Well, I can't do it with that way because that's a plus on, so that insert don't fit into there. So I'll do it a different way. Well, I just need to route these cables back up and do the earth bonding. But we've got a drain off tap down here. I've got the water back on outside. Might not be going through the shore stop yet. It might be on or off. I'll double check with the taps and double check at the operation, but that's sort of the best I can do. But look at, look at that. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like that, but... I don't like movement on water main. Wiggling all over the place. That's that's that little bit done. As I say, I've got loads to crack on with today. So I probably won't get too much more footage, but I just thought I'd show you what I do. I've labelled up the shore stop of valve as well, just in case somebody doesn't know what the switch is, but obviously this kills all the mains water into the house. So I think it just saves a call back in case somebody says, oh, not sure what it does, or turned it off and I've got no water. You can just say, right, it's the water isolation switch in the utility room. Right, that's how I've done these. So I've gone double check valve, washing machine valve. I just need to double up this waste. Um, but that one looks all right. That one I messed up. So I need to try and repair the box. And I soldered a socket to bring it forward, but I want happy. This is not happy with it, so. It's because I didn't bring my pipe work far and found the first fix, so I just have to repair that and then I'll just have to re retuck up the wall. But other than that, it doesn't look too bad. So we just got washing machine, washing machine, tumble dryer, tumble dryer, and then as I say, just need to sort that waste. But other than that, it looks all right, I think. Oh, and this unit's a lot deeper than 600, so the, the machines will go back all the way, so that's fine. We're just getting all the little jobs finished today, really. That's the system. And my mate's just done the connections. And if we always use male irons, because you shouldn't really tighten straight up onto your thing. Onto, I hate I hate them going onto ISO valves. So we just, service valves, male irons onto the flexes, the tap. We just got the waste there. I'm going to crack on with the shower. It's just a Bristol zing. I've got some fast fix kits. I'm not sure if these come with them or not. Uh, they might do. They never used to, but they might do now. So we've just got to get that on the wall and screen up and silicon up and stuff. So it's coming together. If you can hear the beeping in the background, it's that thing over there. We've got no power in the house. There's a power cut, obviously, so we can't charge any batteries up or use any power, proper power tools. So I don't know. It's the coldest day of the year, probably. We've got snow outside and no power, which is fantastic. With these showers, I never use these fast fix kits because you've got to put like, set them up in the wall. So all I do is bring 150 centers and I use that type of product. So you can just put nut and olive straight onto your pipe, put your chrome covers on and then tighten your valve up. So they, they'll compression on, we level the shower up obviously, the pipe should be dead level. And then they just bolt straight on, straight into them fixings. Whereas these ones, these are a pain to be honest with you. So it's worth Spending an extra few quid if you're just fitting these bar shelves and getting the fast fix kits, in my opinion. All I've got to do with these is screw these to the wall. I always put silicon behind my fixings in there, so I'll screw that to the wall, trim the pipe down, put my olive on, then that bit just tightens on, and then my bar shower just 
just literally bolts down to there. Obviously, put your chrome cover caps on. But yeah, it makes life so much easier. That beeping's getting on my nerves. What I've done is I've only drilled two holes because there's plywood behind that will definitely hold on to. So we will pump that full of silicone in the fixings so no water can get behind and we'll fix the bracket to the wall. Yeah. Right, so I've put my olive on there. I always use a little bit of jet blue, you don't have to, but that's how I always do it. And then that will just tighten up onto there. Hopefully that pipe doesn't come past the thread. If it does, we'll have to trim a bit off the pipe. Just nip that up and then let's see if I can do this one-handed. And then yeah, clean the silicone off on the thing. And then they just tighten up. But I'll get it nipped up first. Same with the other one, and then we just got to bolt the shower on. Right, that's the second one screwed in. Obviously, when you drill in, be careful you don't hit your pipe work. You always want to try and run your pipe work straight down. So just need to do the same on this one, make sure it's dead level, and then just bolt the shower valve on. Right, so put your two washers in. I don't know if I'll be able to do this one handed, but it should just be a case of lining that up and tightening it up. I'll get a shot in a second, but I don't want to drop the valve. So it's obviously lining up perfectly for us because we've got our first fixed crate on this bit. So it's just a case of tightening them up by hand and then just nipping them with a adjustable spanner. Because obviously you don't want to scratch the chrome. But yeah, just got the riser rail to do, which will come straight in the middle and then the bath screen. Yeah, nice and easy these. I went and fetched the level just to double check it is, but obviously it's absolutely perfect because I did it. I don't always get everything right, but you can sometimes it's better to wipe with the tile to be fair as long as it looks right it should be all right not that i'm doubting the tiler in any way shape or form but sometimes it's better to go with your eye rather than level this one is perfect anyway right we just drilled the holes for the riser rail one thing i would say every hole you make put silicon in so when you tighten your screw it just fills it so if any water does get behind that it can't get behind the wall so it fully water seals it so we get this riser rail on i've just got to fit the this is like behind the scenes, almost on the floor. Just got to make sure you fit that so your hose don't reach the reach the bath. It is a water regulation. Apart from that, it's dead easy really. It's just measuring exercise and drilling. All right, I've got all the shower rail, rail put on. I've just got the screen to do, but I'll probably do that in a minute. I'm just going to get this basin where it's connected and toilet and that on. Toilet system and that put back on. So yeah. Just kind of running out of time today. I don't really want to come back, but I think I'm going to have to. Right, so we've got that all connected in. I'm just using M and F and a couple of 45s, but it's just it's just a case of going around and getting all the bits finished off. Really, there's just loads of little bits. Just got to go around and put all the pipe guys on all my radiators that fit as well. I really need to wash my hands before I do it because I don't want to get the walls mucky. But it's just little bits like that that just look a lot better than obviously having a gap. Beautiful, you can't even tell where we've been. So, I so said it's just like the devil in the detail. If you don't, it just looks less professional. So, just try and do your best job all the time. I'm just marking out for the cutout on the back to the wall pan. So, what I've done is just drawn around it and I just mark out on the flush pipe. And I'm using a flexi Macau pipe hand connector because it just makes life so much easier on these back to the wall ones. So, I just draw around that so I know the panel will just slot on then. And if you ever need to get it off, it's just a case of cutting the silicone and lifting it up rather than disconnecting stuff, so it makes life so much easier. Right, we're just filling it up. We'll make sure the ball valve shuts off. It's already running straight down the pan. Flush valve probably ain't seated properly. But we'll, uh, we'll give it a good flush and make sure there's no leaks. Uh, it looks like it's already leaking on there somewhere. We'll deal with that. But this toilet all seems to be flushing, no problems. We have got a service valve on, it's just, can you see, you can't see, it's just below there. So it is within regulation, you can get to it nice and easily. So I just need to put the back panel on, put the lid on, and that's that one all sorted. Right, we just turn the ISO valves underneath the basin. We frankly put the waste in, so we see if that leaks. I'm not that in, but we'll fill it up a couple of times and make sure that's all okay. First inspection looks all right to be fair to him, but we'll fill it right up to overflow. Make sure we've got no leaks on that, and then all we've got is the shower screen, silicon up. I'll fill the bath half up with uh, water, not rubbish. Half up with water, and we'll silicon it all up, and then we're pretty much done in this room. 
Right, we're just going to put a little bit of water down this back to start, make sure the waste is okay. Should be fine, should be fair. And then what we'll do is we'll half fill it before we see looking anything up. So we'll just have a quick look underneath. Should be fine. What I always do is splash all the overflow and everything as well. Just make sure that's all fine, but yeah, hopefully this one should be okay. That beeping is absolutely driving me insane. It sounds like I'm in A&E on life support or something. I think I'll need it in a minute. Um, and then what I'll do is I always spray around the overflow and everything as well, make sure that's okay. But yeah. When you're doing these bath shower screens, you always want to make sure you fill that little gap there if the bath's not already been siliconed. That, that will leak underneath there. That's bit, that bit's quite important, really. Right, so I've just screwed my profile onto the wall. I've wiped off the excess. What I'll do before I silicon anything up in here, obviously I'll fill my bath up half full and then I'll get rid of all the dust and muck and everything because obviously that'll just make a right mess. So I just need to lift the screen in. It's a little bit awkward when you're on your own, to be honest with you, but... And then just fix them through here but not too bad they are just a little bit awkward sometimes i look top tip with these if you're on your own you want to prop it on your polystyrene that it comes with and it just sort of levels it up and then you just put your level on and get your first one in and then you you're fine then but yeah i always do that because it just makes it you can do it one-handed then a little top tip with these fugi tools i bought i bought two sets so i cut one in half so i can get behind my bath taps easier with them it's just, they're a bit too fat otherwise. I know you could take the tap out, but it just takes too much time. So I do it that way. That's all silicon up now beautifully. So we'll let the silicon go off, then we'll empty the water. I just want to check all the overflow and stuff yet, but also I've got to check the temperatures and stuff. But apart from that, we're pretty much done in this bathroom. I think it looks okay. I'm quite happy with the finished job, really. Right, I've been around and cleaned up, I've siliconed everything up, so everything's perfect. We even made it so that the door misses the pan. Just, which is perfect. So yeah, quite happy with all this really. Just fitting the toilet on the middle floor bathroom now, and the flush on it is worse than useless. Let me try and flush it one-handed. I'll just put some toilet tissue down to see if it'll flush. I don't know if I can do this. But I've obviously put all the panel and everything on, but I can't do that one handed. I'll just have to cut the video a second and uh, I'll show you. That is the flush. What a load of rubbish that is. Can't leave that like that. It's pitch black in here, isn't it? There's no lights. Um, I, don't know, I don't think there's anything wrong with the way I fitted it. It seems to be flushing. Okay. But. I don't know, the size of the pan or the system's not getting enough water, but it's just one of them problems, it annoys you because you've done everything right and it's just pathetic, but I don't know, I'll have a quick look, see if I can fix it, if not I'll have to, I don't know, I'll have to sort it. Right, the water is going up to where it's supposed to be on the fill line, where it's just below the overflow, you can't really go much higher than that. And it is, it is flushing the full system, so I think I'm going to have to change this pan. It's a pain because I really wanted to get done, but what can you do? You can't leave it like that. It's just really annoying. So we're pretty much done in here as well. So just underneath the base, and my mate's done all this actually. Looks fine. So we're going to change that toilet. I'm not happy with that at all. So we'll get a different pan. I think the issue is definitely with the pan. It just doesn't, just doesn't flush. But it is what it is. Mm -hmm. it just means we've got to come back. Yeah, this looks fine. So pretty much getting there on this job.